Hey now Brawlers, my name is Nick, this is Board Game Brawl, and today we're going to take a look at the latest expansion for Cosmic Encounter. This one's called Cosmic Dominion. Have I mentioned how much I enjoy Cosmic Encounter? I haven't? Oh, okay. I really enjoy Cosmic Encounter. I will say I probably played it way too much this year because, not just because a lot of people in my group were asking that I play it, but also because I it was one of the games I chose for my Play 10 Games 10 times in 2014 challenge. I just call it the 10 and 10 challenge. Um, and, so, and I've actually completed it. I've actually played 11 games of Cosmic Encounter, so I think I'm, I'm good for a while. But the last few games I played were with this new expansion. Now, there's this is the fifth expansion for Cosmic Encounter. Uh, each one adds a bevy of new aliens to the game, as well as adding a few new mechanics with each one. And actually, the first three... Uh, which were Cosmic Incursion, Cosmic Conflict, and Cosmic Alliance, I think. They actually added components for a new player with each set. So if you got all three of those, you can put the game up to eight players. And then the last two, Cosmic Storm and now Cosmic Dominion, don't have another player. But in exchange, they add a few more mechanics and I believe even more aliens than the other sets had. Now, the other thing that's different about Cosmic Dominion isn't just some of the new stuff that's in the game, it's also the fact that all the aliens were fan-created. Some of the most hardcore, die-hard fans of Cosmic Encounter came up with their own aliens. I would guess that a lot of these were probably some homebrew aliens that a lot of these people have been using for years and years. Remember that Cosmic Encounter is a game that came out in the 70s, and a lot of people don't know that. I, I tell that to people in my group after we get done playing it, and they're like, wow, this game only been out for a few years, huh? And I'm well, maybe this edition, but this is like the fifth or sixth edition of it. Um, people are surprised, but you have these hardcore fans that have loved the game for a long time. And now some of them, and I'm sure some new fans as well, have made their own aliens and they made it into the game. So you already know I love Cosmic, so this is definitely not going to be a review about whether that's in dispute, but just how good is this expansion? A lot of people say that Cosmic... Oh man, I always get the names confused, but I think it's Cosmic Incursion, uh, which is the one where that added the rewards deck. A lot of people say that that was the best expansion for Cosmic Encounter, but this one has rewards cards too. So where does this one fall? Well, let's do a brief overview of some of the new stuff that comes in the expansion. Then we're gonna come back. I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of some of the new stuff that comes in Cosmic Dominion, the latest expansion for Cosmic Encounter. Obviously, you have to have the original Cosmic Encounter game in order to play. Well, not the original one, but the base game from Fantasy Flight. And uh, if you want to use any of the other expansions, you can use those with this as well, noting that some of the other ones also give you extra player counts as well. So a lot of the little components that you see here are just for use for specific aliens, which we're going to get to in a minute, at least some of them anyway. So like here, this one is actually for the tourist alien and um, all these little ones here that are double-sided are going to be for the Joker alien. But there's some other ones that actually have to do with the game mechanics. For instance, there's these little donuts <laughs> that I like to call that are for each of the different player colors in the game, even for the ones that only come with the expansions. These are actually uh, little designators that you put on one of your ships at the start of the game, should you choose to play with this mechanic, that designate that ship as your flagship. Now the flagship has two different abilities. One is that it adds an automatic plus three to any encounter in which it's involved, including its own ship bonus for a total of plus four. This is something similar to the Prometheus ship that you gain for that certain tech that you build. But the other ability is that uh, it has a one-time use effect. You'll flip it over whenever you use it. Decide which side you want to use and which side you just want to flip it over to. Uh, but you, uh, once you use that effect, you can actually use the hyperspace drive of the flagship and zip in and out of either an encounter in order to add to a side that it is potentially losing or if you're just trying to save it from destruction. You can also zip it around your colonies to move it to different spots as well. But it's a one-time use thing. You only recharge it if the that if the flagship goes to the warp and then you reclaim it in a later on a later time, or if you would have a second encounter and you choose to forgo that encounter, you can recharge it. Uh, now the other major mechanic in this game is the rewards deck, and you might say, "Well, I thought there was already a rewards deck." Well, there was with the Cosmic Incursion expansion. You have the rewards deck, and if you play with both of the expansions, you can mix the two rewards decks together. But they are both different. While they have mostly the same types of cards, they have uh, this rewards deck has some new ones that are worth mentioning. First off, you have the Intimidate cards with these gray borders here. Now, the Intimidate cards are probably the most complicated card in this deck, but basically what they do is 
You can choose to play uh, an Intimidate card face down anytime during the regroup, destiny, launch, or alliance phase, whether you are the main player or not. You put the card face down so everyone knows, okay, you must have played an Intimidate card. Now, should you be involved in an encounter, either as a main player or as an ally, uh, if you are a main player, you can choose to swap out the card that you put down during the planning phase for this Intimidate card. Or if you're an ally, you can tell uh, one of the players that you're allied with, hey, or the player you're allied with, hey, use this card instead as your encounter card. But if that's the case, they don't get to look at the Intimidate, uh, the, uh, intimidate card before they choose to use it. And there is at least one Intimidate card in the deck that is a negative. So you could sabotage someone that way, although the situations in which you'd want to do that are probably pretty rare. But essentially, these are just powerful encounter cards that can replace your existing encounter card. There are also new attack cards, which look very odd at first. You have a, a main number here in black, and then another number here in white. Now, the reason for this is that in most situations, you're only going to use the black number here, the bigger number. But you'll use the white number behind the slash if you're in the middle of a hazard. If your Destiny card has one of those little hazard icons, which are usually only used with the hazard deck from another expansion, but if that's the case here, then you're actually going to use the white number. So hazards make these cards better depending on whether you want to obliterate your opponent or not. You also have new types of negotiate cards. So for instance, you have Epic Oratory. Uh, in this case, you would actually gain double the amounts of rewards if you choose to. Each You and your opponent you're no, no, successfully negotiating with can actually give each other two colonies instead. And also, if you lose, you collect double the conference, uh, compensation or prevent your ships from going to the warp instead. You have the negotiate right of refusal. So if you get cards from a deal, you can choose to discard them optionally. You have self-defense. Uh, if you lose, uh, you get no compensation, but you get to send an opposing ship to the warp for every ship on your side. And you have faulty translator. Uh, you lose, but you collect compensation as uh, from any one opposing ally or from the opponent if he or she has no allies. Also, players have one minute to make a deal, but they can only use gestures in order to get that deal across. If the deal fails, they only have to lose two ships, however. Then there's a brand new encounter card. Can you believe it? Complete with a new border. This is the retreat card. You can play it if you uh, would lose the encounter. You say, okay, there's no chance I'm going to win. You'll play the retreat card. You do lose the encounter, but all players on your side return their ships to any of their colonies. And if you're the defense, your ships remain on the planet. But if it's opposed by anything other than an attack, it just becomes a negotiate card. So it's like a super negotiate card. New artifacts. You have the Omni Zap, which is extremely powerful. It essentially can zap anything. It can take the place of any, or it can copy any other kind of zap card in the game. However, it does uh, has the drawback is that once you use it, you remove one of your ships from the game or send three of your ships to the warp. So there is a cost to that kind of power. Ship Zap will do what it says. It immediately zaps an opponent's ship back to the warp. Uh, you have Rebirth. You play at the start of any encounter and choose a player. That player may place one or more ships from his or her colonies onto any planets in his or her home systems. Uh, Victory Boon. This will give you rewards if you're the defender. You normally would not get any rewards if you're the main player defender. In this case, the defense receives rewards equal to the number of his or her ships in the encounter. And finally, Solar Wind. This reverses the rewards. After encounter cards are revealed, the gains for the allies are reversed. Defensive allies get to land their ships on the targeted planet, while offensive allies get either rewards cards or main deck cards. So that's all the cards from the new rewards deck. But what you're really here for are the new aliens, and I don't blame you. Now, obviously, there's a bunch of new flares that correspond to the aliens, but we're not going to go through those because, obviously, they have something to do with the aliens for the most part. So let's, And I'm not going to go through all, I believe, 30 of the aliens to come with this new expansion, but I'll show you my top 10, starting from 10 and working my way down, because I hear that's what the cool kids at Light Cosmic Encounter like to do. So here we have the Voyager, and the Voyager is really cool because he can essentially, at the start of his turn, take an entire planet of his and put it into the warp. And not only does that protect that planet from people trying to get at it, but it counts as a foreign colony. And you could really screw other players over who have uh, put foreign colonies in your system by moving the entire ship to the warp. And hey, guess what? It only counts as a foreign colony for you, not your opponent. So that's my number 10. 
Number nine is the Engineer. The Engineer is cool because even if you're not using the tech cards from the base game as a variant in your current game, the Engineer, whenever he loses an encounter as a main player, can essentially start building tech. He gets to draw a tech at random from the uh, tech reward deck, put it on his sheet, and he can research it just like you would tech in any other situation. So you could be the only player in the game having some really cool tech in play. The Pentaform is very bizarre and kind of complicated, but essentially what this does is it lets you take five unused alien powers and arrange them in front of you. And then the Pentaform is going to start off uh, on one of them as, as stage one of its life cycle. And then whenever you would, I believe, gain a foreign colony, you get to move to the next life cycle and gain that alien power instead, along with its Pentaform power, of course. And if you lose a foreign colony, you have to move back. So you're constantly changing alien powers. The explorer gets to, whenever you would have an encounter with someone in their system, you can put out an unused player planet into that system instead and try to conquer it just as you would any other planet. And this has a benefit that, of course, is undefended because your opponent has no ships there. But also, it will count as a foreign colon colony for you as normal. But the more of those discovered planets that you have, the more bonuses you get in the future, in future encounters against undiscovered planets. So that's very cool. The ace is probably the most bizarre of the aliens, even though it's also the most simple. Essentially what it is, is that as soon as you get a foreign colony, you win the game. And that's it. Except that you have to make it until your next turn. And of course, all of your opponents are going to try to desperately stop you from doing that. You also have to remove one of your planets from the game during the game setup, including any of the ships that happen to be on it. Uh, and uh, other players can have an encounter on one of your foreign colonies whenever the Destiny card draw allows them to target either your home system or the system that hosts of one of your foreign colonies. So people are going to be trying to desperately stop you before that happens. Possibly the cutest and funniest card in this entire expansion is the love card. And of course there's hate being swaddled there by the enormous intimidating love. Uh, and it's just, uh, it, you know, it's not overly powerful. I just think it's a lot of fun. At the start of your turn, you can use the power. You can discard a card from your hand, and every other player may can then choose and discard a card from his hand. If they discard the same type as you, that player can release all of his or her ships from the warp back to their colonies. But if a player is discard, uh, if all players discard the same type of card as you, you collect all of the discarded cards. If one or more other players do not discard a card matching the type you discarded, you can release all of your ships from the warp and use them to establish a foreign colony in the system of those players. So. Theoretically, everybody could get something, but of course, love is going to get more than the other people. The lizard is really neat in that very straightforward but neat. You can choose an unused player color, and you can basically have your ships morph into that color, and they count as uber ships, which give you extra bonuses upwards and above what your normal ships do. Uh, where are we at now? I haven't even been counting them off, but this is number three. Number three is the green horn, and he has the power of ignorance. You can essentially make mistakes. Here's what it says, makes convenient mistakes. You can make mistakes that no seasons cosmic encounter player would normally make. So for instance, uh, and this is the fun, the funny part about it. Uh, you, if you have cards in hand at the start of each encounter, you can use this power to show one of the cards in your hand to one other player, then ask him or her a question about that card. <laughs> the other player doesn't have to answer. Uh, so they can say, hey, what does this do? I don't understand this. And just watch them stare at you angrily. But uh, whenever you have no attack cards in your hand, you can draw a new hand. During the Greek group phase, you can rearrange your ships among any of your colonies or, or planets or home planets, even the home planets where you have no colony. You may play your kicker after encounter cards are revealed. So basically this just, much like every other alien, it breaks the game, but this one really breaks the game. Uh, my number two is the bride. The bride is very, very funny. You get to marry another uh, player as the main player. Uh, you essentially marry your opponent during an encounter. That player must choose one of his or her ships and place it on the sheet. You may be married to only one player at a time. You and your spouse can ally with each other without being invited and may show each other any cards in your hands at any time. Once per encounter, you may use this power to allow a trade of one card from your hand and, and your spouse's hand. But most funny of all is that if you choose to divorce your spouse, you get to take half of their hand of cards as alimony. And that is just fantastic. And finally, my number one, I just think it's hysterical, is the tourist. And that's where this little ship comes into play. So when you are the tourist, you get to load up your ships on the cruise liner, the interstellar cruise liner and go around from every to every other player's system and you may if there's a hazard warning 
uh, hazard warnings will uh, make the ship go around clockwise or uh, counterclockwise around the system. And then if it ends up in the defensive system and you don't already have a colony in that system, you can use this power to disembark all of your ships and then gain a foreign colony. But if you do not disembark, you can use the power to send a postcard home. You get to return one of your ships from the cruise liner, cruise liner to any of your colonies and then take a card at random from that player's system. So either way, you get something as you go on your interstellar journey. And uh, there's another, a lot of other little things in the game, of course, in this expansion. It always Every expansion of Cosmic Encounter adds a lot of new stuff. I'm not going to go over all of it, but hopefully you've seen enough. Now, let's get to my final thoughts. Well, here's the bottom line, folks. It doesn't take much for me to get excited about a Cosmic Encounter expansion. Uh, if, it, if you just told me, hey, here's a new expansion. Here's some, it's got some new aliens in it, and that's all. I'd say, okay, here's my money. I mean, that's how it is. More and more and more aliens. It, it, I just want more to this game. You can never have... The game relies on randomness, and you can never have enough of it. Um, and trust me, even without, you know five expansions the game is already pretty random enough as it is it's very unlikely you're going to see two games that have a majority of the same aliens but nevertheless having more and having new aliens that interact in weird bizarre erratic ways with the existing aliens is a huge part of the fun of the game and if you don't find that fun there is nothing i can do for you you are officially a cosmic encounter hater we can still be friends but I'm never ever gonna look in your direction when I'm recommending the game, and you are perfectly happy with that. <laughs> and in that sense, this is not, much like all four of the other expansions, this will not change anyone's mind. But I will say, I am gonna say that this is my second favorite expansion. I think that it's, it's still behind Cosmic Incursion, I believe, which is the one that had the original reward stack. And the only reason I put it behind it as not as essential as that is because that one had another player color. And I think that's uh, one of the most important things about this game. More players are better. A lot of people do not like Cosmic with the full player count of eight. I say bring it on, I love it. Seven or eight is, per is perfectly fine as far as I'm concerned. If I had to choose a number, I'd say six is the sweet spot, but the more the merrier. And I think that's why the other expansion, the Cosmic Incursion, again, I hope I'm getting that right, um, is the best one to get. I agree with the general populace of <laughs> Cosmic Encounter fans on that one. But this is a close second. It doesn't have the player color, but what it has are some of the coolest aliens I have seen. They're not all home runs, but the top 10 that I mentioned in the overview are just so cool. And I specifically only dealt out these aliens when I was trying out this expansion. I mean, you still had, uh, there was a chance that any of the, I think 30 of them, would come up so uh, and there was obviously some doubles in the games that i played with it but nevertheless just seeing some of the new cool ones in effect are so cool the bride and the tourist i mean it's it's such a weird thing i mean I'm, I'm just explaining to you how the basis of the game work are how they work essentially because that's the point of the game is that these aliens break all the rules but to see it change in such drastic ways and to know that this is all from people who love the game that came up with it that's just such a cool thing. So I love that aspect of it. Some of the new extra bits that are added, we have the new rewards deck. And I think that I like the simplicity of the original rewards deck better. I think that things like the Intimidate cards are, they're neat ideas, but they're just a little too finicky. And not, I mean, I would say that's kind of a common thread of a lot of the new mechanics in this expansion. But having the capability of taking this rewards deck Mixing in with the other one is super cool because it adds even more randomness and uh, as long as you've played the game with other people before and they're used to having to learn all these new rules coming up, it shouldn't really be a problem. And in classic Cosmic Encounter fashion, the rules are right there on the card. There's not a lot of ambiguity there, although the Intimidate card can be a little confusing. I think that's the one thing people have found most confusing about the stuff in this new expansion. But I do like all that stuff, and it's one of those reasons why this is right below Cosmic Incursion, because that rewards deck is like the best add-on. It's in every single game that I play. A lot of other things I don't add, I always play with the rewards deck, and now I'm probably going to mix the two of them together when I play in the future. Um, other little things, the flagship thing, I'm not going to say that's a bad mechanic. I just don't think that it's essential. I think that it's just another added little rule that doesn't add a ton to the game. So I could personally take it or leave it. And I think the last time that we played with this new expansion, I just said, let's not bother. Because <laughs> we had a few new people and it's like, it's just another thing. And because everyone has it and because it's relatively simple to get the power back, I don't think that it changes the game dramatically. I think it's just another added little bit of fiddliness. But the, so those are the major things there, the new mechanics. Uh, but the rewards deck is cool overall, 
All the aliens are fantastic, and look, if you're a Cosmic Encounter lover, you probably already own this, you probably had it pre-ordered, and I'm just preaching to the choir, but if you're someone who um, likes Cosmic Encounter a lot, you've owned, the, you've, you've owned the main game, and you're wondering, should I get more expansions, should I get every expansion? Well, maybe you don't need to get every single expansion, but if you're going to get multiple, uh, multiple expansions, that's the order I would go in. I would go with that first one that had the rewards that Cosmic Incursion, and then I would go with um, the, I would go with this one, I'd go with Cosmic Dominion, and then, you know, whatever you want to go with after that. If you're going further than that, then you're fully entrenched in the psychosis of being a Cosmic Encounter fan, and there's just no hope for you, so you might as well buy them all like I did. But I think this is a good one. Uh, you know, every time that they, Fantasy Flight announces a new Cosmic Encounter expansion, there is a part of me that says, really, more? Do we really need more? And then I get it, and I'm like, yeah, we needed more. So <laughs> I recommend this to any Cosmic Encounter fan and anyone who's on the fence about getting the expansions. Another solid hit for Cosmic Encounter. My name is Nick. This has been Board Game Brawl, and I'm reminding you to get out there and game every day and in every way. Take care.